I am Cinnamon Cream, your archer, but today we're going to be talking about the basics, the primary of color mixing for beginners. Now, on the mic is my husband, John. Hello. I'm going to point out to him that the film is a little jerky, and he's going to be able to jiggle the camera. This is a live show, and um, what we're going to be doing is covering uh, primary color mixing basics. Color theory, color mixing is actually pretty advanced, pretty intense stuff. But there's a lot that as a beginner, you need to know day one when you're painting. And I'm going to cover all of those things. And we're going to have the beginning of the class where we're going to cover the basic concepts and terms and ideas that you kind of have to have a handle on. And then we're going to do some demonstrating. I'm going to teach you how to you read a color wheel. I'm going to teach you how to tint, tone, and shade, mix secondary and tertiary colors predictively and reliably. And I'm going to explain the myths of primary colors. Now, this is part of a um, acrylic painting course, uh, the beginner acrylic painting course. And if you'd like to take the whole thing, it's seven concept videos. It's just everything from how to set up a studio to color mixing. And 10 of the first paintings every beginner needs to do. And our first painting is going to be tomorrow. So I'm pretty excited. How are you doing, John? Pretty good, I think. Ooh, what a day. It what a day. Day. Is one of those things. This is the course. If you've been looking for a beginner primary color mixing course, this is the course where you're going to leave it actually understanding what's happening and how to mix the colors that you actually have at home because yours might be a little different than mine. Oh. You know? To start with that, let's begin with what are primaries. Oh, what? Oh, let's see. That's a good thing. I think I have a Start at the beginning, that. beginning, beginning. Mm -hmm. The beginning of the beginnings is what are primary colors. I can do that. What are primaries? Okay, so primary colors are um, red, yellow, and blue, right? When we when we think of that, I think we've got, um, you know, so we've got that at grade school, didn't you? Where your teacher was like, you know, we've got primary colors, and they give you the red crayon and the yellow crayon and the blue crayon, and then they tell you some things about them. Um, they tell you that primary colors mix all the other colors. And that the other colors don't mix primary colors. Now, we're going to get into the myths of that all later, but that's the basic concept that we're all introduced to. The problem is, is that uh, there isn't one set of primary colors, right? You've seen RGB, you've seen CMYK. There's a lot of ways that primary colors are represented. And in pigment, those are even further away from the concept of light, right, of light color mixing. So we've got to deal with that. So let's talk about if you have the right primary. Oh, let's see here. I can't. <gasps> oh, but you disappeared. Where'd you go? There you go. Right are. primary color. I have a graphic for that too. Do you? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Are those... So John's got a bunch of really great infographics to help in the learning uh, part this of one? this course. This one right here. Okay. So in the course, we have um, three sets of primaries that we chose. Uh, from the abstract Senelier line. But you might not be painting with that, right? And you might not have colors that are listed primary. And even if you did have colors that were listed primary, you might have magenta and not a quinacridone red. You might have a napthol red. Paint makers kind of generalize their color theory sometimes. Sometimes they have somebody who's really trained on staff that helps them design these kits, but sometimes they don't. So... Just because it says primary colors on the kit, red, white, and black, it might not be that. Um, and understanding what pigment codes are and what primary colors are can save you as a beginner to know if you can only get a red and a yellow and a blue, and that's what your budget can afford, white and black, how can you get most of the colors that you need out of that mix? So on the red, you'll notice that I have the pigment code up there, which is PV19. Oh, Let's see if we can make a... Right. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's wonderful. I can put you over here. I was not even expecting you to show my hands. So uh, it says primary red in the pouch is 686, but what's really important is the PV19. And the PV19 is a pigment violet, um, and its code is 19, and it's generally a quinacridone family. But even in that pigment, John, that goes from a quinacridone red to a violet. Those oh. are very different colors. The one that we have here is really a quinacridone uh, rose or red, right, in this pouch. And that's something you're going to learn over time. Um, but sometimes checking those pigment codes can help. 
Over here, I have a uh, primary yellow, it says. Ah, oh, but its pigment code is PY74. Could have been Hansi yellow, but it's not. It's not Hansi yellow. It's Alluride yellow, also part of the Ozo yellow family. If you like the um, Artist Loft Level 3, they use Ozo yellow. Um, some companies use Hansi yellow as their primary. And I'll explain to you what the differences of those are in the upcoming graphics, but let's talk a little bit about the blue I'm using because this is important for later. Primary blue, this is pouch 385, and the pigment code is PB15, which is thalo blue. But if you paint with me all the time, you guys paint a different thalo blue, and later in this, we're going to talk about this. Now, John, if you will be a doll and pull up my primary red graphic. Oh, I do have that. All right, and pull. They got to be able to read it. I'm gonna let me move see if me I, over. Okay, or make it bigger. Any I'll, of the things, move me I'll over, make it bigger. Whatever we've got to do. I think We're I also can teach it. you how to read. This I wasn't video. sure how big to make it, and I'll move you around. Yeah, for these. I can cover the words. All right. So in this primary red, now this is goldenpaints.com. Golden Paints is a really incredible resource, and they actually organize their colors from cool to warm. Cool means that the color biases to the blue or warm means that the color biases to the yellow. Um, and in here, you can see that they've got primary magenta, right? On either side of it, they have naphthol red medium and quinacridone red. And what that tells you is if you're looking for a close to primary, but you can't find a primary, you could look for quinacridone red or you could look for a naphthol red medium. Kind of to the far side is that cad red dark. Well, that's pretty biased or that cad red medium hue. And we're going to get into what that bias does later. But we'll just say that the cad red medium has a lot of yellow in it. And it means that you're going to get hidden primaries in your mixes. I also say highly recommend that you just find this and say this because it's just a tremendous resource when you're trying to figure out if a color is warm or cool and you're not sure. You have the best people in the world working there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, their information is the industry standard. Let's go on to the yellow. Let's talk about that. What could you use if you didn't have primary yellow? Let's see here. Let's yellow. Go. Same, same as, oh, it's so nice. Doesn't that look nice? Do you guys love these? These are amazing. Great resource. You've had it in your video if you can't find it, but I do recommend downloading your own copy. All right. So you see in the primary yellow that like, uh, the right there is primary yellow, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, if you go up top, that's the tight knit yellow that I'm always making you use. See how that's the greenest yellow? All right. So on this, it'll say a yellow that biases green or red. So yellows don't really bias blue or red. They bias green or red, green being the cooler of the yellow. Primary yellow is right there. And you can see on either side of it is Hansa yellow, as I told you about a lot of companies use, or cadmium yellow light and as we um, talked about earlier the alluride or ozo yellow also works as a primary for most companies so those are ways that you could find a color that's close to a center primary primaries generally just aren't biased to one side or the other is really what it is so they're more likely to mix pure clear colors on to the blues the blues <gasps> blues Trying to get that right primary. Oh, there's a lot of bias in all these little blues, aren't they? All right, so let's go into the chart. And you'll see on this one, it's called primary cyan. It's not called blue. Now, golden is correct. Cyan is probably the closest to a true primary blue that you're going to be able to buy, right? And so that's a good thing to know about that. If you, if you are struggling with a thalo, you can switch to the cyan. Now, over here, you're going to notice it says thalo blue green shade, thalo blue red shade. I'm going to explain what that is in a minute because our thalo blue in my set that I'm using is different than those two, and I'll explain why. Um, and you'll notice that really here, primary cyan and thalo blue are kind of the only neutrals, aren't they? There's not a lot of neutrals in the blue. So that's what you're looking for in there. And the PB15 is the code that you're looking for. Let me explain what has happened to you with a thalo blue, though. Do you have the graphic, John? The yellow blue question mark question mark question mark graphic. Oh. Uh, man, I got so many graphics. I know. I, I, mean, I gave him so much prep work, you guys. But we have a lot to cover so you guys understand what you're looking at. And you can come back and reference these or you can go to the Golden website and pull this down. 
You just look for uh, warm and cool color ratings on their website. Do you has it? I don't know which one I'm looking for. It has a, a PB15 thalithicane blue, and then it's got two little swatches to the side. Nope. Don't see that one. I'll look if I can find it for you. All right. I have my iPad here. I guess you could show my hand. I can. All right. Hold on. Just do that. <laughs> <laughs> With the graphic somehow is Oh, I loaded. do not have that graphic. Okay. I know that. All right. So we'll look at this really quick. So here's the graphic here. Oh, and hold on a second. Is uh, on the website. Here. Maybe I'm going to make you disappear for a second. Okay. And then I'm going to do this other cool trick. Watch. Aha. All right. So there we go. Neato burrito. Oh, now you can see this now. See, I do a lot of prep work for what I do. So PB15, which is what we have in our little pouch, right? But Thalo Blue Red Shade will read 15 semicolon 1. That means that they have a red bias into the paint. And PB15 semicolon 3, which is the green shade, which is what most of us paint with when we paint with professional paint, that means it biases a little bit to a green shade. So in professional lines, you don't actually generally have the clear Thalo that isn't biased one way or the other. Sometimes you've got to go to a student line to get the right blue. Huh. Huh. I know. This is crazy, right? Do you know what's I, funny? Uh, is that if you leave that there, you can see how dirty don't, your don't, uh, don't. little pad is there. Turn my lights back on. Okay. Hold on a second. Go on. And then I have to go back over here and then right. I'm going to... We're go. almost to our primary color mist. <laughs> By the way, this Look, is the best we did that. color wheel to learn how to read a color wheel. I love it so much. It's a kid's color wheel, but it's like the one I like to use with my students. All right. Let's, uh, so what I want you guys to realize is, is that if you've got just CAD red, yellow, CAD yellow, medium, and phthalo blue, you can do this course. I've tried to do very reasonable color mixes on here, and you can practice along with me, and you'll see where you're at. You'll just have some trouble getting certain colors like purple right? Um, if you bought this set and you want to paint with me, just replace them and you want to add them into your set. You just use them where I use CAD red or I use CAD yellow. You just might not have such a warm bias. However, when I teach you the color mixing here, that isn't going to throw you anymore. In fact, very little is going to throw you once we get into the demo about color mixing anymore. Now let's talk about hue has two meanings. Ah. Uh, where, oh, I have that already loaded. I was appear, ready for hues like have two meanings because they do because they like to make art confusing. See, hues have two meanings. This is just important for beginners, or it's going to be that weird thing that just confuses you for months with no answers. So there's two meanings for hue. Hue is a color name, like blue, violet, red, right? They're color name. It's a hue. It's the hue of the paint, um, but it's also an approximation in pigment. So when you're talking color theory, you're talking the color name, the proper color name. But when you're talking pigment, you're talking, is it a true pigment or is it the hue of the pigment? So you can have cadmium yellow pigment, which is made with pure cadmium pigment, or you can have hue, which may be a blend of other colors to approximate that color. You will hear artists talk about this very quickly and not explain that there could be a difference out of context. So in the context, if somebody's talking about a proper color and they're saying it's hue and they're saying it's a, it's a yellow green, that's what they mean. If they're talking about cadmium yellow hue, they mean that the paint has no cadmium in it. It's a color approximating the pure pigment. Ooh. Just something I've answered questions on for years, so I thought I'd just spare you that little specific nugget of misery. The hues of it all. <laughs> the hues. The hue of it all makes me so angsty. Primary color myths. Do you have those I loaded? Do. Okay. This one? Yes. And then I have graphics for it too. I should put you behind there though. See? Okay. Oh. Yeah. All right. So there are a bunch of myths that uh, we talk about in primary colors and they're true-ish. Ish? Ish. And you go to grade school, you go to kindergarten and they say red and yellow make orange. And then you go to paint and you buy a set and you grab a red and you grab a yellow and it makes brown orange not orange like what you were thinking and no matter how much you mix it it doesn't change and um, maybe you were told that blue and yellow make green and you mix and mix and mix and mix and it doesn't and then you're also told that primary colors are primary because no other colors can make them no no go back to the red you're cycling through far too Sorry. fast so, make smaller 
<laughs> he's I so can, excited. He's like, I got graphics. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Well, I'll let you know if there, okay. you need a graphic. Okay. You don't have to guess. I won't make you guess. And we'll put that to the side because that's going to be relevant in a second. So they'll tell you that you can't mix a primary color. Mm, that's a true and light. Um, but it's, again, not true if you're doing color theory. I actually have three videos. One of them is like how to paint red without red. And I use secondary colors, purple and orange. Um, so you can, because of hue, mm. <laughs> that's the approximation of a color, not necessarily the color family. Actually, because of both hues, you can make red without red. So that gets very confusing to new students when they're trying to figure out about color theory because you'll be told something is a rule and then two seconds later told it doesn't apply at all. So understand pigment is ground up stones and natural objects are synthetically made chemicals. It's not light and light is not perform light. What you see in the rainbow is not what's happening on your palette. What you're dealing with on your palette is reflected light, right? It's the light coming off the pigment that you're seeing and then your eyes sort of subjectively interpreting. You know, maybe you were told that you can't make blue. Guess what? You can make blue, got a video on it. Would you like to show them the blueberry, John? I can. It, what you see in the thumbnail, I made with those colors. Exactly those colors. I made blueberries with purple and green. Mm -hmm. Color theory, right? Very blue blueberries, aren't they? They are. Very blue blueberries. I have all kinds of weird color mixes like that. We're going to be sticking with primaries, but these are things that you need to know. There are rules-ish. They're primary color-ish. A lot of colors get put in sets that are not, that are, Primary ish. All right, let's do yellow with no yellow, the lemon. So, pretty much everything they told you in kindergarten is wrong. And I'm sorry to let you know that. <laughs> you know? But it is just something that happens to all of us. Now, I totally want to stay on hands, but let's go to the basic color wheel. Let's just talk about the color wheel. And you can give them the graphic, and then I will use my wheel to explain it. This is so you know if you're coming back in time where the color wheel is. Right. We're going to, we, we time stamped and chapter marked these segments so you can find your place again if you need to go over a certain concept or idea. So here's my happy dandy little, uh, this is by the Color Wheel Company and it's the color Saurus. And um, if you're a homeschool mom, it's really good, but actually the Color Wheel Company is a very good uh, company. It's a really good first wheel to understand terms and concept of the color wheel. Now, if I'm going to have my graphic, and I will try to match my color wheel to the graphic. Come on, Mr. Dinosaur, let's matchy matchy. All right, no, no, leave it up. Color wheel graphic, we're going to leave it up for a minute. This one? Uh, um, you, I, I oh, about. sorry, yes, let's do um, how to read the color wheel, and then for the next three, let's have the color wheel graphic itself, where it's just the wheel and the primary second, that one. All right, and then move over, and then my hands too. Okay. We can do that. Isn't this amazing? This is a lot. Oh, you don't want that yet. Yeah, hands. Because I want to show you what's you there and then hands. show you how you read that. it. I can do all that stuff. Look at this. Okay. Look at you right now, you're in the void. I'm in yeah. the void. But look, you're I'm back. I'm in the void. And now and I'm back. And look, we're going to have my some hands. There we go. We can do all of these things. All of these things. So we got to read the wheel. I can move it over. So okay. hold on a second. So, and you see the wheel here, and this is when you can reference again if you want to kind of understand it. And we're going to go over with our little dinosaur and talk about how we read the wheel. So, on the outer edges of most of our wheel are our primary colors, which is our yellow, our blue, and our red. And our yellow, blue, and red are in equal distances, right, from each other. So, if you go between the yellow and the red, you'll notice there's three segments. Between the yellow and the blue, you'll notice there's three segments. They make a triangle. It's a triadic. Okay, so you've got your yellow, your red, and your blue separated equal distances apart. Now, secondary colors are when you take your yellow and your blue, your pure primary, and mix them together in equal parts, you should end up in the middle and get your green. Okay, get your green right here. That's how you get to your green. Now, if you wanted to mix your yellow and your red together in equal amounts on the e outer edge, you would get to the hue orange. I know I'm going right to the beginning, guys, but knowing how to read this wheel will help you do color and all kinds of things. I'm going to go to the red and we're going to mix blue. 
and this is you're going to hear me say purple but what i mean is vi violet <laughs> all color wheels will say violet i say purple that's because i'm weird it's not because it's correct because purple's a, an imaginary it's like purple and violet annoys me but we're going to violet purple it right so <laughs> On here, so secondary colors are going to be your purple, your orange, and your green because those are the second colors that you can make if you mix your primary colors. Okay? You know, I imagine around the time the Colorsaurus was coming around, there was another purple dinosaur that kind of had the corner on purple and dinosaurs. Right. Let's put up our secondary color thing. Did we put up okay. our secondary colors? I don't know. Do we just, no, That's we've, okay. Oh, um, which? Uh... We've gone over primaries. Which we, we've already done, so we need to move to secondary colors, lower that. thirds. Would you like secondary? Let's talk about secondary. Well, we just talked about secondary, so I think we missed our lower banners. But it's okay. Secondary colors. That's what we're talking about. Is the colors that you mix with your red, your yellow, and your blue. Now, the issue with secondary colors that can come up where you start to have color problems, let me explain it to you on the wheel. Is say you have a red, right? But your red isn't right here in the middle. It's not, it's not a quin. It's not that pure clarified red, right? It's not a magenta. It's over here towards the red orange, like our friendly cadmium red. Da -da. Right? So now we have just a little bit of yellow in that, don't we? Mm -hmm. Something to know about colors. If ever you mix your yellow, your blue, and your red together, you're going to get anywhere from a gray to a brown to even a black depending on how you run that mix but what you don't get is bright colors and sometimes in paint pigments there's a hidden primary there's a hidden other color so you're getting your red your yellow and your blue because the paint biases it moves away from the red towards one side or the other alizarin crimson would move down towards the red violet cadmium red moves up towards the red orange so you have a hidden blue down here and a hidden red. So if you go to make a secondary color, mixing red and yellow, you've secretly put in a little blue. Or you've secretly put in, you go to make green with uh, yellow and, and uh, though you go to make orange with yellow and red, but you've secretly pulled in another color. So that's, that's what's happening to you, right? Like if your yellow is biasing over here, like the titanate color. Mm. So if you look at where primaries are in the wheel and you think about your paint, if they're moving towards the blue green or the blue violet, if they're moving towards the yellow green or the yellow orange, right? Your CAD yellow medium is yellow orange. It biases right about here, right? Now over here, there, if there's red here and you got blue in there, it's tough to get a green. In fact, this color wheel kind of explains what happens when you put red with your green. Look at that. Hold on a second. So if you turn your little wheel, your dinosaur wheel, see there's a little red thing or a little opening. What if there's plus red? See how plus red makes the green go? Ugh. Uh huh. Ugh. So if I come down to say, let's say I have a little yellow, right in my in my red. Let's say I have cad red and I mix thalo green. There's a little bit of that yellow in there. You can see on this wheel, it's going to tell me what's going to happen. This wheel tells you what will happen if there's a hidden bias or an additive of red, yellow, or blue. What happens when those primaries get in there, right? And you can go around and start to see that if you've got a little bit of blue in your paint, like say a Lizrin crimson, and you try to make orange, you're not going to get this orange. You're going to get this color. So if ever you were wondering why, you're, why am I not getting colors that I meant to get, that's what happened to you. It's Mr. Dino Wheel will tell you why. Tertiary colors. <laughs> mm, let's see if we get the tertiary colors. There's some tertiary colors. Love ter do you love this wheel, you guys? <laughs> I don't work for the company. I just... Just use the wheel. <laughs> I just use the wheel. Tertiary colors. Did we throw them up? You did. All right. So you've made green, right? But if you want to get one point between yellow and green, you add a little more yellow. So it's two parts yellow to one part green. You get yellow green. Right? Mm -hmm. If you were to mix three parts <laughs> yellow, right, to your yellow green, you get this very bright color. So this will also tell you that's how you would read the wheel. There's very complicated, pretty arty versions of this wheel. This is just the introductory level, and it will help you read all other wheels because they all do some version of this. 
with little punch holes in them. This is nice big viewing screens. It's a really good color wheel, actually. Okay, so if you mix, you have your blue and you're trying to create your, uh, you know, your purple, right, your violet. If you add more blue to it, you're going to get your tertiary color blue violet. But if you add more red to your violet, you're going to get your red violet. And we're going to go through the practice of this and you're going to see how it works in your color. On any primaries that you have, it won't matter. You'll be able to mix colors after this. We're just getting the concepts in. And this is for acrylic paint in here, right? This works for every paint. For watercolor too? Mm-hmm. Okay, and oil. cool. If you just came by and you're like, I need some color theory and I'm in oil, this works the same. Same, uh, same. Yeah, we had someone's asking just about that. Yeah, this will work across all your classes. So say you were making some orange, you're so happy you made your secondary orange. Your tertiary color, your third mix, if you add more yellow to it, you get yellow orange. And if you continue to add yellow to that, right, you're going to get a brighter yellow. Oh, you go green. No, it gives you kind of a little army green, doesn't it? You add more red, it gives you a more red orange. It kind of takes you back to here. So that's what it is. More yellow moves you more towards the yellow orange. Yellow being the greater color, right? in that mix the way the color leads the hue leads lets you know what's more in the mix if you're listening so if i go down to red orange the first color is red that means i have more red in my orange if i were just listening to someone talk about color and they say make a make a red orange mm. you'll know you'll hear that audio cue and you'll go oh i need to add more red in my orange now, we're going to keep going through here. This, and the, yes. this I'm going to try to catch some some questions here. All right. Before we go on to saturation go value and hue, ask me some questions. Oh, I'm just trying to go through and catch some of them. Like, what does series number mean? Um, series number. If you want to know more about series number and all the weird information on a tube of paint, we did acrylic paint, everything you need to know. If you go to the timestamp where it says how to read a tube, you don't even have to watch the whole video. You can just go to that. It'll tell you what all the series is. But series basically um, tells you the expense of the pigment. It never happens in student paints. It only happens in pro paint. And so if series is more expensive, that pigment is harder to source, maybe harder to make, rarer, that kind of thing. Now, when you're talking about mixing these paints, you're not always talking about mixing in equal parts to get them. It's, it's, there's a gradient to get to some of like, if you, if like right now, mm -hmm. if you mix just a little bit of blue into the orange, that yellow orange, you're going to get that kind of weird green, depending right. on how much you mix. Right, right, exactly. This is just to give you an idea of what will happen. Now, when I understand that, say I have a, a yellow orange. And I need to push it back into the background. It's in the distance. It's not as saturated. It's in green. I can add a small titch of green and that will desaturate, right? That means to take down the vibrancy, the color vibrancy, my color a little bit. Another way of talking about it is tone. That's a way of toning a paint to gray it. And it pushes that color back. You don't have to take it all the way to this green gold. You can use it just a little bit to desaturate a color. But you got to understand what's happening in your color wheel to kind of know what's happening in your color palette. Right? That's why a lot of times teachers don't teach primary color classes because this is color theory. <laughs> now, this will all be re in the mini book, right? Mm -hmm. This is all restated in the mini book and have all the graphics in the mini book. So you can go back and reference them to your heart's content. And if, if you were looking on our website for primary lessons, that wouldn't necessarily be a concern because you've got a bunch coming up, right? Uh, I have previous primary lessons. I've done a primary course with a magenta yellow and blue. I've done true primaries. I've, do I've done a bunch of primaries. I have primary color mixing classes. Um, this is just a deeper one than I've done. Like I've, I've done one where if you have CAD, red, CAD, yellow, and phthalo blue, I've got a whole course on just mixing those three primaries and what colors okay. you can get. This is a good one here. Mm. When you're starting out here mixing, it's really hard to know what proportions of paint to start with. So Starling was just uh, just asking, should you start mixing colors half and half and then adjust? Do you dip your toe in? How do you do it? All right. So initially, you've got to do it in a very controlled way. And we're going to get into the demo of that where we make our uh, secondary colors and our tertiary colors and we adjust them up and down. And we're going to talk about value how to tint, tone, and shade. And I'm going to show you the tricks of how you have an effective uh, lightening or darkening, saturation or desaturation of a color um, with your brush on your palette. 
but okay. there's a clue in the color wheel. So if I'm in orange and I want to move from pure orange to a little more yellow orange, I don't have to make equal movements every time. I can bring over a little more yellow and a little more yellow and a little more yellow mixing in until I get it to where I want it. And this doesn't show a gradation across this space, but if you think of it, it would be a gradation. Mm -hmm. Being a little more orange here and a little more yellow here, the peak middle point being right here. So if you imagine each little space on the wheel being a little bit of color, you could tell which color goes in more. If I mix a little more red, I'm going to go over here. If I mix some more yellow, I'm going to go over here. And I can keep going over here till I get all the way to yellow. Mm -hmm. So the color wheel can help you kind of go, okay, this is where I'm going. If you hold up your wheel and you're like, oh, that's more yellow orange, then you know you're going to have to mix a little more yellow in it. Right. Whenever you see someone mix uh, colors from three colors and you just see them go, boop, 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 that's what they're doing. They're doing this work up and down the wheel very quick in their head. But, but you're new, right? So you got to give yourself a second to figure this out because they make this seem so easy in kindergarten. And then you're like, oh, this will be the one thing I get when I start painting. And this is the hardest thing <laughs> there is to do. <laughs> All of it. But once you understand these concepts, then it's like, Oh, okay. It has rules. It has function. It has process. And anytime there's those, you can do it. Are you ready to bring us to the hue, value, intensity, and tone? There's a graphic for all of those. Oh, yeah. It's the you one with the saturation like and value. This one? Uh, no. Oh, uh, no, that's too early. Go back. Oh. We're still on <laughs> lower thirds. Revert that. Rewind it. No, I'm just going to guys. Okay. I want the one that says hue. Oh, this one. Lower third. Okay. You. See. So we talked about that, right? And I need, uh, there's a graphic. Um, it's it's this one. Okay. Here, this one right there. I, I need that, that graphic in the side. Okay. He's got a million buttons to push over here. So and I didn't, I didn't give him a chance to And then to I'll pull that one up for you. Okay, thank you. It's just a little large. So Hugh, we talked about that, that there's Hugh. What we mean in Hugh is green, yellow, green, blue, green, blue, right? The colors that we have. Um, And so... Hue and pigment means an approximation. Hue and our color, color wheel means the color that it is. Uh, let's throw up value and talk about that because we can kind of see the value. Let's put that down here. Actually, I'll put that back up here for right now. And I then to figure out how to. Ooh, well, I'll move it in just ooh, a second. I'm going to. <laughs> okay. But you want to see some value is what you want to see. Do you see the value bar? on? Oh, value. And then he'll bring the value bar back. So you see the value bar. Um, all the way at the end of the graphic where it says value. And up at the top, it says light. And at the bottom, it says dark. For most art, we think of value, whether it's drawing. Zoom in on that for just right? a second. It doesn't matter if you're doing watercolors, pastels, oils. Or we think about it in, oh, yeah, this is good. Let's make this big. This is nice. Um, you see it in 10 shades of gray. Not 50, but generally 10, right? And so the form of your objects on your canvas of our subject is a lot determined by the value. And that's the one of the first things that you've got to figure out as a new painter is how to lighten and darken your paint so that things seem like they're more in shadow and things seem like they're more in light. If you did do a ball, right, you would have all the little shadows at the bottom where the light is blocked and all the little highlights up at the top and you would go through those little 10 shades, right? So that's where the magic of the painting is. That's how a brush makes our tree branch seem round. Now over in saturation, this is another thing we talked about. Remember when I said about knocking it back? Whenever you hear someone say, knock that color back, they mean two things. You're toning it, you're graying it, and you are desaturating it. Is because things that are desaturated appear further back in the canvas. This is that is, the intensity? That is uh, saturation. Yeah, it's the intensity of the color. That so could also be intensity of color. So would that be like a graphic for intensity? Um, yeah, intensity. Sorry. Okay. I went I just, on and I didn't. Uh, well, yeah, intensity. Thank you, babe. I just want to make sure that like <laughs> I know what we're doing. <laughs> Some days I'm. We a, have notes so we don't get too lost. So that's what I'm talking about here is in that saturation <laughs> with there. the intensity, right? That's intensity of your color. So if you have pure color from the tube, right, that's got a lot of saturation. That's the pure pigment. But like say I took red and I kept adding green to it like we talked about, that would be changing the intensity and toning it down, right? Taking it all the way down to the less. 
I could use the color gray and continue to add gray to my color to make it less. Is that Whenever a- I make a color less saturated, it takes, it becomes less dominant in my painting. It pushes it back. Is that toning? I know we're doing basic stuff here, but it's just good to know what's happening. Huh? Is that toning? We're going to get to tone in a second. Oh, I just don't understand the difference between intensity and that, what you were just well, saying. Well, sometimes intensity can be part of toning, but toning doesn't have to be part of intensity. Ah, okay. Right? Sometimes saturation, so the intensity of the color, the saturation of the color, where toning is a very specific activity that we do in the paint. It's okay. a very specific term. Because you could also buy pigment that was not saturated. That was done for you too, right? So you're buying colors from the tubes. There's lots mm-hmm. of ways that you can get here. You could have a hidden color bias in your paint where there's red, yellow, and blue there that you didn't know because you mixed a uh, cad uh, red medium in phthalo blue and it's got a green shade and the cad red's kind of biased orange and that's definitely primary. And so it's tough to get to a purple. You have a less intense saturated purple. Let's go to tone. Okay. This is a turn you turn term that you will hear i don't have tone necessarily on this wheel um because it's a little bit not quite all the way into the full artist concepts toning right is where uh you add gray to a color you tone it down you add literally black and white you add gray um shade and the and the tone of it is like again how bright or saturated or desaturated uh, let's get into shade real quick because I want to just go over that. Shade. When you shade something or you tint something, if you shade it, you're adding black to it. If you tint it, you're adding white. So whenever they're like tint it, they mean lighten it. Whenever I or anyone says shade it, they mean darken it. It doesn't literally have to be black. In this, we're going to be literal. We're going to do basic color theory. But tint and shade, tint, lighten, shade, darken, tone gray desaturate that's those were those terms let's so, talk about color schemes real quick hmm? now diane diane is, how are you doing i know we're covering a lot i may be so we're gonna go after this we're gonna you're gonna demo some of this mm-hmm. i'm gonna so, demo it so, so because in learning it's not just concept it's also practice you have to take the learn the concept and put it into practice to make something you can use in your painting and you may need to watch this a couple times because I'm, you're going to be introduced to new concepts that you're immediately thrown in to use. So you may have to watch it a couple times to understand those interworkings. And when I say this is the beginning of color theory, I'm not exaggerating that. Oh, color no. theory is like, man, it's a deep, deep well. I'm yeah. giving you just the introduction. So if you read an article, you have some idea what everybody's talking about, right? Or if a teacher says a word, you kind of cue into what they mean. So you can paint along and have a better time doing that. Like, okay. So Hmm. when would, when can we talk about how do you know when, how do you discover the bias of a color? Oh, cause it, it'll clue you in cause it won't make a good color. So if you take a red and a blue and it doesn't give you purple, then there's a bias in there. Sometimes you learn to see it. Look, if you look at your color wheel, right? You can see your red here and your red orange and your orange. You can see that in pigment too. You're going to over time learn to observe that your reds are all very different, right? Uh, and then you'll learn as you add, you know. You'll start to recognize you'll be like, oh, that, that red's very warm. Because it'll react different to blue warm, than it will to yellow. Right, because the warm side of the wheel is yellow, orange, red all the way through here. And the cool side of the wheel is over here, right? So warm side of the wheel, cool side of the wheel. Again, that's that's where you get that army green versus sea green. Warm and cool. You'll start to see the colors have their biases. And remember, if you don't know, do you, the graphics we threw up from Golden Artist Colors, they yeah. did all the work for you. Uh, I mean, some of these are really hard to know. This is organized by bias. It's literally they went and they used a spectrometer and they organized it by bias. So you can you can like go check it out. Just, you don't have to discover. You don't have to have 20 years of painting experience to just go get the answer. If you're like cerulean blue, where does that bias? You can see where primary is and it tells you with whether it's a red or blue, bi- red or green bias. And if it from primary, right? So there's the primary cyan, that's neutral. 
everything going back towards those teals is a green bias. Everything, you know, coming forward can be a uh, uh, red bias. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And, and well, they, they're very good at explaining it, right? So I've got primary cyan, everything going back towards teal. That's all super, super de duper green, right? Uh-huh. Then coming forward from it, you have phthalo blue, which is not as green as all those other colors, but they tell you it's got a bit of a green shade. And then they go, but then there's the red shade, and they go through and they tell you green to red bias in order. You would never intrinsically know that because phthalo blue says green shade. So wouldn't you think it was more green than cerulean blue deep, just intuitively, mm-hmm. standing at the paint tube counter? Now you don't have to wonder that because they rate they did it. I'm with ambient here. They did it for this you. Is, this is intense, and it does divide the girls from the women. It's, <laughs> it's like you know when you got this. What did you just say? A- ambient said, she says that this is this is intense, and it separates the girls from the women. <laughs> oh, it was okay. She can you can say that. I, I can't say that. <laughs> I was like, what did you say? Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, no, he's no, fine. No, he's was... okay. All right. So I get asked all the time, how does this color theory, how does this basic color mixing apply to me? Because I get asked all the time, how do I know what colors to use in a painting? How do you know? How do I know what colors to pick? Oh, guess what? You don't have to just know that. You don't have to have a natural and inborn sense of color at all because the wheel will tell you what colors to pick. So uh, if we can put up our um, graphic and put up color schemes, let's do color schemes and then our graphic with the value shade thing again. Okay. So, and I'll show you on the wheel how to figure out your color schemes. By the way, you can print these out and I have several on my site that you can print out and have them free. So I do like the color wheel company because it's got the spinny, spinny thing and they got a pocket version too <laughs> with a bunch of information in it to make it even easier. Okay. So the first color scheme is complementary. You'll hear that say that co- complementary colors. Hmm. Does that mean yellow says nice things about purple? I think so. But what it means is these are op- opposed to each other directly on the color wheel. See that there? Yellow is directly across from purple, right? Red is directly across okay. from green. You're, you need more than this. You need. Let me see if I can do this. Oh, wrong button. Where'd okay. I go? Here. It's good to see them up close. Now you can see what they are, and then I'll explain all of them on the wheel so you go oh that's what the wheel means and the wheel will tell you what to paint (gasps) oh perfect all right so say that you've got yellow right right across from that is your first this is your first color scheme that you ever learn how to do complementary colors colors that are opposite on the color wheel if i go to red and green they're opposite on the color wheel that's why we like christmas colors so much you know if I go blue, it goes to orange. Opposites on the color wheel. Okay, that's the first set of color schemes that you're going to do. Now, it works for secondary and tertiary colors. Yellow, orange is those, opposed exactly opposite from blue, violet. They're complementary okay. colors. I'm, I'm following you now. Every color on the outside, every hue on the outside of the wheel has an opposing friend. Red, violet is a yellow, green. Now, it's interesting enough, dioxazine purple has, uh, and you don't even ever see its little friend on the color wheel because it lives somewhere down here in yellow green. So sometimes it gets more complicated than this. This is the basic first concept, but there's like an algebra of color, of course. So as you listen, you will hear more and more intense and involved things as you go down your painting journey. This is just well, level one, right? I want to look, there's triadic. Okay, don't, don't, don't skip around. Okay, sorry. Okay, now let's go to analogous. That's the next concept in is color it? theory. When you're uh, trying to uh, mix things. Okay. Get it? Let's show them the analogous. There we go, analogous color. I was excited. There's a lot of them. All right, it's a harmony. Color harmonies, you'll hear that too. When painting with kids, I only put out harmonies. Right? And the reason I only put out harmonies is they'll only mix good colors, even if they're intermixed, right? It, the color biases are minor and... You know, because kids, the first thing they want to do is mix all the colors on the plate. Their their first instinct, because their shirt just is going to make a rainbow. And then they're very disappointed when it makes gray or green. But that's one of the first instincts, right? So harmonies means that it is the colors next to each other on the wheel. Be like all of these, right? Red through the, it's a harmony. These are a harmony. They're next to each other on the wheel. 
if you're trying to create a calm painting, a serene painting, well, you wouldn't want to use complementary colors because that's dynamic. That's energetic. You would use a harmony. Kind of in the, and they're next to each other. What harmonies do I want? Well, I've got a blue kitchen, so I can probably go from blue green through violet to make something kind of exciting and pretty. But it's also very calm and will work in my house. If I am trying to put up a healing painting for a friend, I can put something very calm up. That's a harmony, right? Next to each other, on the wheel, harmony. Next one is triadic. And we all know one triadic by heart, right? Okay, it's got to go that way. There you go, triadic is the triangle. So triadic color schemes are always dynamic. Uh, if you do quilting, you've probably done uh, blacks and brights. Uh, you actually do use a lot of these in certain types of other crafts. But the one triadic color scheme you know is red, yellow, and blue. Equal distances, three apart, across on the color wheel. However, they're not the only ones. I could do one, two, three, blue, violet, one, two, three, red, orange. So yellow, green is a triadic color mix with red, orange, and blue, violet. Right? I can uh, go red, violet. One, two, right? You go down. One, two, three. Boom. Yellow, orange. One, two, three. Boom. Blue, green. Red, violet, blue, green, and yellow, orange is always a pretty color combination. So if you know how to mix a color that's yellow, orange, and you know how to mix a red, violet, and you know how to mix a blue, green. It's done handing me. You're like, just stay there. <laughs> I teach art on YouTube to beginners. I know I'm bringing you guys through a lot. But if you do this, then you'd be so much happier over the next year. Just knowing this, just knowing any element of this, whatever you take away will make it easier for you. You won't be feeling so much anxiety. All right, so that's what that means, triadic, those equal distances, three apart on the color wheel. Split complementary colors. Oh, now we're getting fancy. Ah, I get so many like little tricky, tricky questions about a split complementary color, right? So let's go back to our basic that John has got me trying to find my little dot. Just right there. That's okay. So there's my, you remember our first complementary, yellow and purple. Opposite on the color wheel, very dynamic. A split complement is on either side. Mm -hmm. Right? So a painting done across there on either side, and I even find with a harmony, so you've got a little bit, a little, a little bit of the yellow, and then a lot of this very exciting painting. Right? But for sure, on either side, that's a split complement. So if you have orange, your split complement is blue, violet, and blue, green. See how I can read this on the wheel? I can. Right? That's where it is. You can do it anywhere. Yellow, green. If this is the complement, then it's violet and red. That's how you find that. That's a color scheme that you can use. That's one that's going to work out often and make beautiful arrangements. Um, rectangle. Let's do the rectangle. It's kind of like a split split complement on either side. So imagine if your split complement was on both sides. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. It's your split complements on both sides. It's the twister of the art wheel. Yeah. Now you're getting, now you're getting tricksy with it. Here, split complements on both sides. Right? Here, split complements on both sides. You don't have to know all that by heart. Okay? This is just the basics of it. And Color Source says you can do it. You could get a color source wheel as a first wheel. It's a good wheel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I recommend it. I really do. I don't get paid by color source in any way. <laughs> okay. Now, if you've got specific color mixing questions, we can try to get those in the after show. We're going to get those specifically in the after show if they don't be covered in the demo. Right. All right. Let's get to my favorite color scheme. What's that? Square harmony. Boop, boop. So, my favorite color scheme is a square harmony. It's probably the closest to one of my favorite artists, uh, Bob Blass, Bob Burris. There's the, he's a wheel that just does this for you. But what he's really talking about almost is a square harmony. Mm. So, if I have yellow and violet, right, and then um, I'm going to have my uh, blue-green, 
and my red. And it makes a square. So it goes square. It's a square like this. And you can move that visually around in your head, right? So if this went over to yellow green, this would move up to uh, the orange here. Wait, no. Yeah, orange here. I'm right off orange. Okay. And then um, this would go over to the red violet. It just all moves over one. The square moves, moves. It's the even diamond. So a good wheel will have this for you. And how you basically do this is um, predominantly pick your complement and then you hit with a little bit of that secondary spice. Mm. Right? Or you could say it's two, it's two apart. It's two colors apart is another way of thinking about it. So if it's this color, then it's two colors in here, right? And then it's two colors in here, and it's two colors in here. It's just every two. So it's split by two and it goes around the wheel and you can organize that into any group. And so like I would use this color scheme like personally, I probably do most of it purple and then I do my focus in yellow and I would do little pops of color in the orange and teal. Right. And that exact one. And it's not that I have to do purple. I just I just like purple. I just like violets. That's just what I pick. Maybe you like yellow and you want most of it to be yellow with a focus of purple and a little pop of the green and orange. That's your preference. That's where your preferences come into play. There isn't really a specific rule there that you have to follow. This is just a guide and the wheel can guide you through. So sometimes it's three apart, right? Triadic, three apart. My favorite harmony, the, the square harmony, two apart. And the reason it says harmony is because it is. It's always a harmony of color. It just always looks good. Always looks good. Oh my goodness. There's a lot. Whew, that was a lot. I think, I think now we're on to hands. Now we're on to work. We're gonna... We get to demo now. Whew. Sorry guys. So again, color Saurus, right? Um, it's got lots of extra information like your tint, your tone, your shade. If you didn't remember, it gives you definitions on the back. Color Wheel Company um, goes all the way through. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not, I, I kind of know them, but like, I don't know them. Like they have ever given me a penny or even a color wheel. Like we're not friends, mm. but I, I mean, I, I've like met them. This is a good company though. They make a really good product. The color wheel company, um, makes varying levels of this from the color source to quite some serious art tools for professional artists. If you're brand, brand new or you're with kids, I say get the color source because it's not intimidating or overwhelming. You know, even if you're looking for your first color wheel, I think the color source is a good place to I start. I really like color source. <laughs> I could probably sell a bunch of these if I was selling them. Um, if it doesn't work out on YouTube, I'll go. I'll go into color mixing. Okay, we're into our demo time, guys. You ready for it? What are we going to do next? All right, how to tint, tone, and shade color. Oh yeah. How to do it? So we learned what it is, what we mean, but how do you do it? How on earth do you do it? So okay. Let's talk about the first one, how to tint. How to tint. In practice, not in theory. Okay, so here's the thing with paint. Okay. We so talked about this a little bit earlier, that these have hold more... Hold on, I, that, you're going to have to... Let me come over and help oh, you. Oh, oh no. Yep, hold on a second. What happened? Oh, he's just got to adjust the camera. I've got the palette off there. We guys zoom out. Do I need to flip this vertical and move this all in closer? I've got my notes right here. You think so? Okay. And I'll move this. I moved over this way because you were like having some things. As long as I can see that, I can do We're the We're going to get my head out of the way, guys. Yeah, I'm going to adjust some things this. here, so don't But we'll worry. talk about this. So we talked earlier about the tinting strength. The tinting strength, which is on the tube of your paint, um, lets you know how tinting it is. But compared to white, all of this has a much stronger tinting strength, yellow being the weakest against it, probably in this group, thalo blue being the strongest, or maybe uh, Mars black being there. So tinting strength is how much the color can affect another color. Yellow, low tinting strength. Blue, red, higher tinting strength. Black, strongest tinting strength. John's going to make me small. 
I'm going to fix this just two seconds. Let me fix that two seconds. So when we are uh, tinting, which is to lighten with white, we want to be really careful and go slowly. And you don't want to take the white over to the red. Like you don't want to try to lighten red with white. It's going to take so much of your white paint that you're going to waste a bunch of paint. When you're trying to tint, you're going to take your color to your white in small incremental amounts. So I've got my bright here. Make sure the brush is clean, right? And what I mean by that is I would come over with my red if I wanted to create a tint of the red and say I'm getting just a little bit. I'm not trying to take the white to the red and tint it. Lighten it. And would have like all this white would barely lighten it. I have to go get more and more and more. Right? See how little of the red it takes to tint? So when I'm tinting my paint. Pigment to the white. Strongest pigment taken in small increments to the weaker pigment. Right? Sneak it over. I mean, if you look at this, if I just try to take this over here, right? I couldn't get a light color very easily at all, could I? Hmm. That'd be very hard. So that's why you want to come over. And that's true whether you're doing blue or anything, or even a mix, like say you're tinting a secondary color, like you're tinting your purple, lightening it, you would want to take the purple to the white. So that's a paint management strategy. Small amounts of your colorant to your tint, your white. It's easy to darken. I mean, just so easy to darken. Look at that. Hard to lighten. So you want to start at your lightest that you can. Let's add a tone. Mm, how to tone. Well, we are not going to do the more complicated using complementary colors to tone the paint too much. I'll show it to you a little bit when we get into secondaries. But toning in the, in the course of what we mostly mean in color is to take a gray. So I'm going to take a little bit of my black over to my white and make a mid gray. Right. So here I've got a mid gray. There we go. A mid gray would be like one part white, one part black. It is easier. It's not easier. You could do this with a palette knife, but most people don't start out with a palette knife. So I'm demonstrating with a brush. So I've got a gray. I bring it over here and I add that gray to the red and I have desaturated his value. Right? That's a desaturated value of the red. Let's come back and do like a little tint over here. So we can show that. I'm going to change your brushes. This one's holding too much water. Mm. Sometimes it'll happen. I'll get into my half inch angle. Right. So we've got this nice little tint here. And then you now we can go down to some depth. As you can see, it's just easier to darken. If I had gray. I have toned it. Knocked back the saturation of the color. Even if I take my red and I add a little gray directly into it, it does desaturate that color. Can you guys see that? That is less bright than the pure pigment. Get pure pigment, toned pigment. If I want something to be very bright, I want to get less toning in it. I don't want to put the gray into it. Let's talk about shading. Okay. Shading is like tinting, but with black. And now the rule changes because the black, remember we talked about the dominant pigment, oh, look, the higher orange. tinting strength, right? So now I don't want to take the red over to the black. It would take so much red to impact the black, right? So if I've got some red here and I want to darken it, I want to shade it. I bring the black over to the red. You, I barely brought any black. And did you see how much that shaded it? It darkened it.
Doesn't take a lot of black to darken any color on my palette. So I've got to bring small amounts of the black to the less dominant color, to the less at the tinted color. The tinting strength is lower on red than black, so the black goes to the red. To recap, okay, if I'm trying to tint any color, I'm going to want to take that color to the white because it has a higher tinting strength. So I would go from red to white or blue to white or yellow to white. I wouldn't try to take the white to change this whole group of paint. That would go crazy on me. But when I go to black, when I go to shade, I would want to take the black to any of the colors. Like if I'm going to take, um, like say I want to take a little black to shade my yellow. Right? Doesn't take very much black to shade that yellow. It would take a lot of yellow to shade the black. If I come back the opposite way over to the black with a little bit of yellow, that didn't do anything, did it? So I've got to bring the black to the yellow and work in small amounts so I can control the shading. Shade to add black. Tone to add gray. Tint to add white. These are just functions of lightening and darkening any of the colors that you're mixing on your palette. All that means. All right. Are we ready? I Do we have the tint, tone, and shade down, my friends? I think so. Making sure. Give John a second to check the chat, and then we'll move on to how to make secondary colors. Okay. And you use what paint you have at home because you just need to know what your paint will do. Don't worry about what my paint will do. You got to see what your paint will do. All right, secondary colors. We talked about it on the wheel a little bit. Let's put it into practice. Now, one of the things we don't want to have that hidden color in there. So we're going to rinse our brush out thoroughly, aren't we? Mm -hmm. We don't have any paint on our brush. And let's start with our first secondary color. I've got some red. Is this orange? And I'm going to take some yellow, about the same amounts, and I'm going to mix them together. Wait, wait. I have something for you. Orange. Orange. Yeah. We're going to make orange. Up. Okay. Just want to make sure everybody knows. Okay. No, that's good. That's how we're going to make orange, is yellow and red. Now. I have one job, and that's to push buttons. Not every red and every yellow makes the same hue of orange. Sometimes they're desaturated because there's a hidden bias. Right. right. So if you have two craft bottle paints, you've got a yellow and you've got a red, and you mix them and you get an orange that's a little grayed out, hidden bias in your craft paint. It's fine. You just need to know that's what's happening. It's not that it's happening. It's that you don't know that it's happening or why. Right. There we go. Getting a little bit of that. So I'm just trying to get to the mid-range. And see, I can get right back to it again and again and again and again. I've got to be able to make a mid-range orange, which I can then... What? Can I tint it? <gasps> I can. Can I tone it? I can. Can I shade it? Oh, gosh, I can. So, secondary color orange. Let's do green. I'm Pickle Rick. Let's do green. <laughs> All right, green. Blue and yellow make green. Mostly. Pretty much. If I were to do cad yellow and ultramarine blue, they, they have a hidden bias in there. Ultramarine is biased really red, and cad yellow has a warm bias to it too. So, pretty much I'm getting an army green. But... This thalo blue and this yellow in my primary set is going to definitely make me a green. One part blue, one part yellow. Now I'm contented. I can. It was very minty. Look at that tinted. Now I'm going to tell you something, though, very important about green. In general, I light my green with yellow first and then, and then tint with white. That's the thing that I do, and we'll get into that on secondary colors, and you'll see me mix, and you'll see me talk about that all the time. Green is its own weird world. 
I yellow, I, I lighten uh, red if I'm doing warm paintings with yellow too before I lighten with white because it'll take it into the pink so fast. Just something you might not know. Okay, I'm going to tone. Look at me, I'm toning with a gray. Not a saturated of a green, is it? Mm -hmm. And I can shade with the black. There we go. Pink tone shade, my secondary colors. All right, the hardest one. Yeah. Violet purple. Mm. So uh, if you have cad red medium and thalo blue, you're going to get a purple that is very gray. We have a black screen. I saw that. It went away. We'll yeah. fix it. All right, so I'm going to take void a little bit of my every once in a while on me. red That's over. I'll take it up here. I'll okay, take a I'll little bit of my red over. Shh. And I'm going to grab a little bit of my blue and I'm kind of mix them together one to one. And what I'm going to get is my purple. It's not that it's not that I have always have to have the best purple is purple. It's that I have to understand what my purple is. Right. I just need to know what my paints will do. If you have a paint color that you just can't get, that's the one extra tube of paint you buy. Mm hmm. Right. So if you're on a budget and your primary colors don't give you a good green, then you buy a phthalo green. If you're having primary colors and they don't give you good purple, then you buy your purple. If they don't give you good orange, you buy your orange. You're going to get two of the secondary colors good every time. Like in this set, we get a good orange, we get a good green. We get a slightly desaturated, not as bright purple. If I wanted a very bright purple, that's the one tube I would buy. Hmm. But I'm going to tint it. You can see it's pretty purpley. It's purple enough. For all the painting I'm going to do through the series, it's more than purple enough. You know, and I can add the gray. You know, a little bit watery there, but you guys get what I mean. Add the gray. Or I can shade with black. So that's a lot of different colors that I can get. That's why I have a color mixing recipe thing 403 color recipes because this gets pretty wild fast now, this all right is, the last one we got to do is gray now this seems like really kind of advanced concepts but it's kind of important to know these isn't it right and it, it feels like i think for beginners it feels like these should be okay i'm gonna be weird here i'm gonna I, I, when i was a new mom i decided i would breastfeed not that you need to know this but now you do i decided that's how i wanted to feed my kid and um, I just assumed it would be easy and natural because, you know, it seemed like one of those things that should be easy and natural. Right. It was really hard. And I had to get a lactation consultant to help me, you know, and nobody really had any, like, information they could give me. Sometimes in life there are things that seem like they should be the simplest thing in the world. Orange, Green and purple seem like they should be the simplest thing in the world. Color mixing for primary seems like it should be the easiest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Certainly felt easy when we were kids, didn't it? Of course, our, our pressure that we put on ourselves was a little bit lower than we do as an adult. So my weird analogy being sometimes things seem like they should be easy, they should be natural, but they require one practice and two, a little more information. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, the learning... thing I shared with you <laughs> Now, learning yeah, you know, and learning these biases and this weird kind of uh, color talk mm -hmm. will help you understand the paint making it harder for you, not your skills making it harder for you. Exactly. That's why I tell you these things. So you don't blame yourself when it's not your fault. Oh, and if you're home breastfeeding, it's hard. It's not your fault. It's really hard. Lactation consultant. That's my number one gift now. <laughs> I give it a shower. The, 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 if, if the mom chooses, I, I feel like. The only requirement is to feed your babies. Not how you feed your babies. I don't have to judge. But that's what I would say. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things are harder than they appear on the outset. So mixing gray is also right. one of those things that's harder than it seems on the outset. One of the number one mistakes that beginners make is they try to lighten the black. They don't darken the white. So what you do when you're trying to make grays is the first thing is take a small amount of black over to your white. And I'm going to make a light gray. Oh, that's then I'm going to take another little small amount of black over to my white and darken it again. I make a slightly darker gray. Then I can take some more white, oh, black over to my white. 
and darken it again. Okay. Um, can I ask you? Yeah, and then I'm going to take some more. Oh. Are you swatching? Am I, is this swatching? This is swatching. Uh, you should always be swatching. Be swatching. Okay. Sasquatch says be swatching. <laughs> Squatching and swatching. But right? what, that, what does that mean when you're doing that? When you put out Tessa paint to see what your palette's actually mixing. Sometimes it's hard to see a color until you get it out on the paper. Most of your color classes will involve you doing this activity, which is swatching. Mm -hmm. And you should swatch your colors. I have color chart videos and all of that because the number one thing you can do to save money is know what colors your paint already mixed. You don't buy paint you don't need. And that's one of those things where you can discover, hey, I was trying to get this one color this one way, but I found out there's this totally other way yeah. to get it better. That's how you discover weird stuff like secondary colors make primary colors. <laughs> Remember what I said in those videos when I made those videos, you know it, you just didn't know you knew it? Mm-hmm. Like, you knew. You knew. That uh, that Dox is in purple and Thalo Green made purple. If you've been painting with me for a while, you just didn't know you knew it. They make a purple. Everybody's good as that. A blue. Everybody's good as that. I mean, blue. Everybody's good as any of the blues that I could get out there. Okay, are you guys ready? We're gonna make tertiary colors. We're almost done. We've learned a lot today. It was a big yeah. video. All right, let's make some tertiary colors. You want to make some some tertiary, tertiary Ooh, colors? Look at that. That's what you're looking for. Some tertiary. All right. So let's start out with yellow orange. Yellow orange? Now, I could, as a person, uh, go, okay, I'm going to make yellow orange. So I need to make orange right and then keep adding yellow to it. Mm -hmm. I use the same principles that we do with black and white. So what's my higher tinting strength? My red is a higher tinting strength than my yellow. Okay, I'll just put a little yellow over here to the side so I have it. So that's my stronger tinting strength. That means that this I bring over in small amounts to my yellow. I brought just a scotch over. I don't try to go from orange to yellow orange. I take just a small amount of red over to my yellow and I tint in increments. If I'm trying to get to yellow orange, that's how I would get there. It's very easy. Did we put the yellow orange thing up? I think we did, yes. Okay. Now let's do red orange. Red orange. You can do that too. Red orange. Now I can pull out a little of my red so you can see it. I'm going to take just a smidge of my yellow over to my red. And you're going to see that that just kind of goes a little bit yellow red. All it does is warm up my red. Now, if I'm trying to get to like more of a cad red color or brighter red, I would do that, right? And I can add just a little bit more yellow. So I'm just slightly darker than the orange I had. So let's put them out on the palette so we can see them. Practice with me. Let's make a mid orange, a yellow orange, and a red orange now. Put it into practice. Make a mid orange. One to one, right? We know how to get there. All right, let's make a yellow orange. I got some up here. And let's take our red orange and put it out. Mm. So we can see what it is. It's red orange, mid orange, yellow orange. It is. That's what you're trying to do. Those are your tertiary colors. And if you add tinting and toning and shading to that and the fact that you can mix complementary colors, wow. You've got all the colors in the rainbow that you could possibly need to do a painting. Even with student paints, these are student, right? These are the these are the artist grade kind of student price paints. Yeah. Dude. We're here. We're not struggling. We're not suffering, are we? No, we're not suffering. No. Shall we make, ooh, let's get into the purples of it. The, let's make some red-violet purple. I got it. All right, so what has the higher tinting strength over the red is the phthalo blue. All right, the blue has more tinting strength than the red. So if I put out some red, I'm going to want to bring out the blue in smaller, like, incremental amounts, right? 
And that is going to give me a purple. Right? It's different than this purple. It's a red biased violet. A red violet. If I add a lot more blue to it, past the point of purple, right? I get a blue violet. Throw out blue violet, sorry. Oh, sure. I did not give directions. That was on me. All right. So that's blue violet. When I add more blue to the mix, where was that on the color wheel? Here we are. Re real practice. I added more paint. I got to my red violet. I added more blue. I got to my blue violet. All right. And at the end, I'm going to show you how you, you can do some cool things here. We're going to, you're going to love this so much. Okay. Because it's where it all comes together. I love it where we can bring it all together for the students where they're like, oh, wait, this is the thing. I'm going to take it back to a mid-purple. There we go. There's our mid-purple. Okay. There we go. Last ones we're going to do are yellow, green, and blue, green. And I think uh, I'll make the mid green this time just so I have it in the center. So we're going to make a mid green, just our regular green, right? That's where we mix uh, the blue and, and yellow together to make a mid green. So if I'm going to do yellow green, did we put it up already? Yes, I just put okay. up yellow green. All right. So that's the green with more yellow in it. Since the green. Since the blue has higher tinting strength than yellow, I want to bring blue to the yellow, don't I? I don't bring yellow to the blue, I bring blue to the yellow. Is that process making sense to you guys in your color mixing um, palette management? How you so. pick the tinting strength of the color to determine what color you move to the other to mix? I don't think I've ever taught this before, and I feel like that's a thing that you guys need to know. How do I mix the color? When you guys say, how do I mix the color? The, the, there's the question that you know, which is like, I just want to get to this color, but there's the thing that you don't know, which is how you choose to take a color to another color, right? Because look at my yellow already. It's got like so much tinting on it, doesn't it? So much tinting. If I want to make it a lot more yellow, and that got red in it, and that's going to gray it, isn't it? Because my, my paint at this point, this is why I do the landing strip. <laughs> okay, let's make a, let's make the blue green. So I've got my mid green. Now I can very easily darken my green with blue. And I can get into a blue green. I think this is the strongest set of colors that it makes in this set. This does really well in the greens. Now, let's just real quick look at what we know from our color wheel and what we've mixed. Okay. So we know... This is kind of like our, our recap. We know about complements, don't we? Mm -hmm. Taking a little yellow out. I want some pure yellow. There's some pure yellow. Okay. What's the complement to yellow? Get a good one going here. There's complementary colors. So I didn't have the complement to yellow in my primary set. But I can mix it, mm -hmm. so I can do a complementary painting. All right, let's talk about the complement to uh, blue is orange, right? Mm -hmm. So if I have blue out and I want to do a complementary color painting, I'm going to want to come in and... Got my orange there. All right, you know where it is. You can use the color wheel. If I wanted to have split complements to something, well, gosh, it's a red orange and a yellow orange, isn't it? Oh. Kelly was like, I was just looking through your playlist, and what does B-A-Q mean? Hmm? 
on your playlists, you have a bunch of stuff that say B-A-Q. Oh, Big Art Quest. What does that mean? That's the first time I tried to do this, but it was just mayhem. <laughs> <laughs> so what it is, is I just cover a topic really in-depthly for a year. The first time we did it was to just try to explain everything you needed to know in the art store and just be more confident. Um, and then, and then we started doing subjects. We did faces. We did uh, fairy tales. Uh, this year, we're doing dogs. And we just do a lot of lessons based on that theme. And there's a group for it. And it's just about that more deep dive into our learning process. So whenever you see BIQ, it's a big art quest. Mm -hmm. This actually counts as part of the big art quest for my big art quest students because we're almost rebooting, rebooting the original. Yeah, there'll be there'll be new shirts for sure. So. Now, if I had green and I wanted to not use gray to tone it, like say if I had that, I could come over with this orange into my green and tone it, couldn't I? Just mm -hmm. like my color wheel said. My color wheel didn't lie. See? Let me see if I can get a little more. You guys can really, really see it. Right. My color wheel did not lie. That's the color. And that's also a way to get to brown. What? Yeah. Pretty cool. I have a whole video on how to mix brown, how to mix black. This is it. This is where it is. It's one of those things that seems simple when you just sit down. But if nobody tells you this stuff, how could you possibly know it? Mm -hmm. Right. This isn't. So, it's like recipe. It's not something that you just naturally could do. Right. Some things require a little assistance and mentorship and help. And uh, color theory is one of those things, especially your first toe, your first dip of your toe into the subject. Um, you know, you need a little help, a little bridge to get you across. Now, if you get this skill set down. All the other color theory classes will become easier and easier and easier sequentially as you go. Mm -hmm. This first skill set, you get this down. You get these first seven skills down from my videos. Everything else will flow in, right? And it's okay if it takes you a second to get it. It's called color theory because it's a it's a it's a force of study, mm -hmm. right? Um, if you love this, I'm on black. Man, black. Oh, yeah, you're just, I just thought I'd give them the, this is the part where okay. you can start here. You're are talking, we gonna, you start are we gonna, um, oh, I have all the stuff. I'm going to, all right. So guys, uh, yeah, that's my color beginning class, right? It's, it's the seven videos plus 10 plus the after party. And now you know why you deserve a certificate mm -hmm. because really, honestly, if you do all this, you knew something, you literally just know, you learned a thing. You, you know more than some people who went to art school, to be real honest, um, because they don't always think to, you know, do some of this in every single course, right? Not all people. Really, art school covers a lot of the stuff. But I have, I have run into where this isn't necessarily core, so, but mostly it is. But you know those things that you have to know. Do the courses or just take this one if you just needed some color theory. This definitely will get you anywhere you need to go and all the terms that people just so casually use in their beginner acrylic courses or their beginning oil courses or their beginner watercolor courses, all those terms that us teachers just so casually use, knock it back, tone it down, suddenly have context. Because otherwise you're just sitting there, what do you mean by tone it down? Do I just need to be less crazy at home? That's probably what you were thinking. Mm -hmm. I didn't know she could hear me yelling. I was just, I was just <laughs> having a moment. We want to spray out those colors, right? What do the words mean? What do the colors actually do? For real and why do why does it not work For all real. right guys do you know what's next let's talk about what's next so excited about what's next the next so you've done the seven the super seven the sweet seven and you're ready to do your first 10 painting mm. you're ready to do them do you have the uh preview i do all right do you want to let them see that while you're here or you they get that on the way out this is the way out we're on the way out we're on the way out. We're on the way out. They can see it. <laughs> Come over. Start Hold over. on. I'll, I'll give them a pause. I'll make them. We'll start start it over again. Okay. I'll rebuy. So I want to tell you something about the first 10 paintings and then John's going to hit play. I've taught you concepts. I've taught you concepts about medium. I've taught you concepts about studio and tools. 
I've taught you concepts about color and technique, right? In the beginner acrylic painting course, all those concepts are there. Now, like I said, there's, there's information, but it's not knowledge until you put it into practice. That's when it becomes true knowledge for you. Something you can use more than conceptually. So no longer fantasy table artists. We're going to go be artist artists and we're going to do 10 paintings. And I've designed these 10 paintings to have a series of skills that you've been introduced to and each skill, each painting, and I'm kind of famous for this in Acrylic April, each painting teaches a sequential, sequential <laughs> building block skill that leads into the next. So your first painting is going to be Happy Cats. Happy Grumpy Cat. Happy. These are two cats. They're really funny. And um, we are using just the materials that we talked about, right? These are just the materials for this course. It's just the primary colors, just the brushes, just the 9 by 12. Shall we show them? We That's can. what you're going to do tomorrow at 1. This right here. I wonder if you can, from this, recognize some of the skills that the previous classes have demonstrated to you. Can you see them? I see all kinds of sketching in, drawing, mixing. I saw some tinting, right? Saw some contouring. Oh, dots, <laughs> some little textures. Using value to create um, form. Ah, layering. Got some layering. Sketching again, drawing with paint and chalk, right? Here we're going in. We're layering, using the light color to make up for transparency where we need to. I'm going to have a traceable, but I'm going to show you how to draw these guys in. They're so super cute, the grumpy cats, right? You've got to come tomorrow and see if you can put all this into practice with your little 9 by 12 canvas and your brushes. I think that you can. Mm -hmm. I hope that you can. And we're going to show this at the beginning with the materials, too, of the video so that if that fast view helps you, which I've gotten feedback this year very, very much that it does, um, you'll have that. And then you'll have the step-by-step -step of the lessons. There's a mini book for this. So if you've got, if you just need to print something out to kind of go over the concepts again, we have it. Rewatch anytime it's time stamped. If you're like, what was that golden thing? Go hit those, go do the chapter thing and click it. It'll take you right to that chapter. Like, comment, and subscribe because we work really hard at teaching art. And you should come back and learn more of it with us because we're so good at it, aren't we, John? We try to be. We try to be. We try really, really hard because your experience matters. If you had some questions that I didn't get to in the show, we're going to do a quick Q&A over on Facebook, on the Facebook page. Um, that's very informal. If you are not here for the live show and we didn't get your questions or the live didn't answer your questions, or you just, you know, we're in Australia and this is 3 a.m. Leave a question in the comments below and I get to it. I check my channel all the time. And I want to thank um, all the patrons because they were asking, how does this happen? How do you do this? It's <laughs> patrons. We and couldn't if, do it without patrons. And they out. really put up with a lot. They do. The patrons yeah. are here, like, to be part of the mission. Because, you know, we, that's why, how we do it. That's how we do it. Couldn't do find it without them. Without yeah, super chats and emoji clubs and patrons, and you can join the patronage on the on the um, on the uh, website. Mm -hmm. We have it set up where you just set your own patronage because everybody's in. You know what? The future is so uncertain. You guys figure out what's in a budget that does not stress you out, right? Whatever that is, old Medici style patronage. Yep. Now for the after show, we're gonna take a quick break and mm -hmm. then we're gonna go over to Facebook. Make right? some coffee. Yeah. And then I'll see you. So you guys, you walk dogs, pet cat, take a restroom break. We're going to make some coffee. And then we'll go over at Facebook and kind of talk about what we learned today. Try to answer all these questions for you. Right. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye.